Thank you, Tori. Here's an intriguing question uh, that uh, interests me. Um, I'm fond of a quote by uh, Oscar Wilde. When I was young, I thought that money was the most important thing in the world. But now that I'm older and wiser, I know it is. <laughs> so we can't deny it. We all have an interest in it. Even St. Paul, this is the year of St. Paul, said, uh, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And every time I read that phrase from the Bible, I think, well, doesn't everybody? Uh, <laughs> but this question says, Movies with discreet Christian themes, Lord of the Rings and Chronicles of Narnia are quite successful movies with strong, uh, while uh, movies with stronger Christian themes such as Fireproof and Bella tend to struggle. So how should people in any form of media present the faith? I presume this question means if you wanted to reach a wide audience. I'm, I'm stumped, I don't know. Uh, I know that we may argue, as the writer said, uh, overtly Christian themes often bomb, and you have to do kind of wall of wall, wall marketing where they just rent the theater and the people come. But the movie studios generally are not interested in uh, Christian themes in fiction, in their, in their films. Uh, so I don't know how to do it. Well, I, think, I think to reach, you know, it's often better if one's, one's faith is implicit in what one writes rather than specific. I mean, I think if people think they're being preached a sermon through a novel or through a movie, then, then they just, don't want that. But I, th I hope that sometimes when, when, when you write a novel or you produce a movie which, which has no sort of overt Catholic or Christian theme, but nevertheless the values represented in the story are Christian and, and would it have some effect upon the people who read the book or watch the movie. Mm. Yeah, I think we all remember the movies of the 50s and 40s that really were overtly Christian, mostly with Bing Crosby. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I think that's died out. You know, so you have to find it subterranean in a subterranean way. This question asks, um, and, and uh, this intrigues me because the very little writing I've done have been book reviews, and I even put them off forever. Then when I read that someone like Anthony Trollope would get up at a specific time in the morning, write the same number of uh, uh, sentences each day, and then stop, I thought this self-discipline is preternatural. So this question is, when you are writing, what is the schedule you follow? I very much manages to teach and be a deacon and write books. I've never been able to write if I'm doing anything else. I've only had a job once for a year and I didn't write anything during that year. My, my, I, try to, I, I think routine is very important in writing. I think if you sit waiting for inspiration, um, it won't come. So I sit down at my desk well, now it's probably about half past nine. It used to be earlier. And, and sit there and work through till one o'clock. Sometimes nothing happens until 12 o'clock or even 12.30, so you sometimes write very little. It's agonizing when it happens. Then I have lunch, I have a little sleep. I've always taken a little siesta after, after, after lunch. Um, go for a walk, come back, have some, a strong cup of tea. You know, the English always drink tea at five o'clock in the afternoon. And then go back and do a couple more hours. And that's usually my limit. I, I, I don't find I can work. But I do think routine is very important. I, I was trying to impress that on my nephew who was writing a novel, and I said, you know, you've got just to have a, a, an inflexible routine and work from nine until lunchtime. And he looked rather dismayed and said, now don't get up till lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> get up at half of noon. <laughs> For me, it's uh, more catch as catch can. But I think one of the advantages of being at this business for a while is it's easier to get into something and, and to come out. For example, I could be writing and answer the phone and get back into my writing, and some people can't stand that there's a disturbance. So I've just gotten used to a different way of writing. But I, my ideal day is like yours, but I very rarely have ideal days. Well, who does? Huh? <laughs> this one says both authors. Would you consider writing film screenplays? There are so many incredible stories of Catholics to tell. Well, Pierce uh, and I both have written screenplays, but it, uh, uh, it's, it, I don't, I haven't really ever written anything explicitly Catholic except for Maria and Ecstasy mm -hmm. as, as a film script. Um, most of the time I'm writing about sinners. <laughs> 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 they're, they're always more interesting than saints. <laughs> <laughs> my sister and my niece, 
watch all kinds of daytime soaps, but not for the heroines to find out what that rotten villainess is going to do next. I've written a script which, you know, for the last 22 years has always been on the verge of being made into the movie, and you know, wonderful actors have said they'll do it. It's always in the last moment, you know, when somebody's got to sign a check for twenty million dollars or something, it falls to pieces, it falls through. I'm, I'm, I mean, the good thing about writing a novel is, is, is it is easier to, what you might call, bring it into production, and, and it, it, get, it gets published and it's there for people to read. But the danger of screenplays is, is, is that they just don't get made into movies. I, I mean, I have friends who've made careers, and very well-paid careers, out of writing screenplays that never get made into movies. And I think, in a way, that's rather sad. And I think quite a lot of talent that um, might go into the writing of fiction is siphoned off into the writing of screenplays. The fact is, you know, we live in the age of the movie, and, and, and most people would love to write the movies rather than 